I want to give a shout out to Take One, Take Two. Um, and the question he posed is, may I ask how much you were taking between both jobs to be able to buy a house and have healthy savings within four years? Inspirational video. I'm in the same situation you were in when you were 33. So, um, first of all, I want to say, um, uh, boy, situations, you know, situations change all the time. And, um, you know, nothing goes to plan always. There's always some something that messes up, so on and so forth. Um, it might be a good thing for you, you know, you might find yourself um, with a world of opportunities um, being in a new situation and commiserations if there's children involved, etc., etc. Anyhow, moving forward, um, how much am I taking between both jobs? So, my first job, um, I make between 32 and 35 k per annum um, without overtime yeah, it's my basic take home pay okay and with uber um, i typically make somewhere between 29 and maybe 35k as well so in total um, i'm probably grossing around i don't know maybe 60 somewhere between 60 and 67 68k um on a yearly basis yeah um that's that's gross yeah so obviously paye tax comes out automatically and I on a monthly basis and um, with everything else I do um, I can offset my expenses um, against my earnings yeah so um, the reason that I chose um, to do private hire work is because I wanted to do something where I can offset my expenses against my earnings yeah, if you do full, if you do overtime in your full time job, typically tax man's taking his cut. You don't have no say in it. Yeah, if for the, on the other hand you do some um, work on a self employed basis, you can offset your expenses and obviously bring your tax bill down at the end of the financial year. A little bit more tricky to set up, and you need to know what you're doing. But I mean, once you've got the hang of it, um, the savings can be substantial. Yeah, so I thought it was a better way for me to make more money. And extra money as opposed to just doing overtime in my full-time job i work in social work as well so it can be a little bit um emotionally um, draining you know when you're dealing with people personalities feelings and loss trauma etc 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 um it can take a soul in you okay so um moving forward um what is what is um take one take two asking um how are you able to buy a house and have healthy savings within four years. So it didn't actually go um, in that sense. Um, however, um, what I did, I used my full-time, the money from my full-time earnings, yeah, my PAYE job, that financed um, my, my purchase of my vehicle and um, my insurance costs and my week-in and week-out running costs, which were basically fuel and um, just like cleaning the car, cleaning products for the car. I mean, then tires, brakes, bulbs, windscreen wipers, servicing, that all came out of my full-time allowance, yeah? So therefore, I was, and my full-time money also paid um, for my day-to-day, month-to-month, week-in, week-out, living expenses, food, accommodation, um, and any activities I was doing for myself or for my children, etc., etc., etc. So therefore, um, doing private hire work um, around my full-time job, any money I made from private hire work, I was able to put directly into savings. Yeah, so that went into a separate account. And then when it's time to take the tax, the tax money would come out of that and I'll have a lot left over, yeah? Yeah, of course I did a lot of spending as well, yeah, but it was in moderation. If I made 500 pounds, it's nothing for me to go and take 100 pound of that and um, you know what I mean, go and spend that and do something nice of it. Yeah, so all in moderation, but the name of the game was saving um, in the first instance. Okay, um, so that's my view um, from um, a part-time model. Yeah, so the model of things, to, um, I'm a part-timer as opposed to a full-timer, not a model as in striding on a catwalk. Yeah, um, and um, yes, I did have healthy savings, yeah? <laughs> Until um, I didn't buy a house, I bought an apartment, yeah? 
So yeah, my, my, my savings were healthy. Um, I mean, obviously with Uber earning 500 pound a week around a full-time job, I don't really see that as an issue for me. Um, I do shift work, um, as I've said in previous videos. So sometimes I get four days off in a row. Sometimes I work three days in the week. Um, and other, other weeks I'm working six days um, in, in a week. But in between that, I mean, sometimes I start in the afternoon, so I get the morning to myself. So, I mean, it's feasible for me to do a few hours in the morning or vice versa, I can switch it up and I work in the morning and I'm free probably most of the afternoon or some of the afternoon and all of the evening. So there was a lot of options for me to um, um, find time to make that extra money. And obviously the longer you've been doing private hire work, um, the more you can kind of read your area around you. So you know when it's gonna be busy, when it's gonna be dead. Um, if it's raining, you know I mean, look ahead um, at the um, weather forecast, get a weather app. Look at the weather app, if it's gonna rain, just plan your day around the weather, you know, if you ain't got nothing better to do. So I did that for a few years. Um, obviously, um, I bought a car. Um, um, I used 3,000 pounds to pay for the vehicle. Um, that was my last 3,000 pound. Oh my God, it was so hard giving that money up. And um, I took out a loan for the rest of it. And um, that loan got paid off in absolutely no time. Um, so there's no vehicle overheads anymore. As opposed, apart from um, the insurance you have to pay year on year. Um, my insurance has gone down substantially since my first year D doing private hire work because um, my no claims are now protected. And um, of all the accidents I had, um, they're all no fault claims. So um, as we stand now today in January 2019, I've got four years, no claims protected. And my insurance is potentially it's probably over 800 pound cheaper than it was four years ago. So on average, it goes down by 200 pounds. Well, for me, it's gone down by 200 pounds per annum, yeah, per year. Um, yeah, and yeah, my, self, my, sa my savings were healthy until I bought an apartment, yeah. So um, everything's ticking over now nicely again. Um, although I've got my apartment, um, it's, I mean, I'm used to the money, yeah, in all honesty. Uh, my full-time job will um, provide enough income for absolutely everything, yeah, all of my outgoings, but if I want to do anything above and beyond, maybe like go on a holiday or go to nice restaurants all the time, or just, you know I mean, just buy those, you know I mean, things that are above and beyond what you buy every month, like buy new furniture or, I mean, do a particular activity that costs a substantial amount of money, then um, this is where private hire work comes in handy for me and it gives me the extra money. So. Um, I'm not budgeting in terms of um, trying to scrape by on whatever little money I've got left over from my full-time job after expenses. I'm able to determine any additional income I make during the month and that in turn benefits me. You know, if I want to have a light month, I can have a light month. It just means I'm not spending a lot of money. Um, if I want to go in and make loads of money, it gives me surplus income for, for um, the immediate time ahead of me and maybe the following month and the following month after that. Yeah, and it, and it enables me to save. Obviously, um, when you are doing full-time full -time work and you are um, doing private hire work around that, um, you have to be aware that, I mean, it's, it's a business, it's your business, and it's all that money you make, you can't just go and spend it, because when the tax man's calling, I mean, you're gonna have to honor that agreement and pay your tax. Yeah, if you've got a good accountant, you can bring your tax bill down substantially, but you still got tax to pay. So, um, I mean, when, there's videos saying I made a thousand pound a week, I made 500 pounds in three days or whatever the case is, tax has got to come out of that. Yeah, so um, if you are doing any private hire work, save your money, get into the habit of saving your money. Don't um, be that guy or that girl who's just like getting all lavish and buying stupid stuff. And I mean, you haven't got any savings and when the tax man comes or the tax woman and all the tax office comes looking for you or writes to you, um, you ain't got no money to give them, yeah, because you just, you know what I mean, spunked it up the wall, so to speak, yeah. So, I um, hope that answers your questions, um, and I hope that the future um, pans out in the right way for you. Just be mindful, it's your business, um, stay on track, and um, budget your money, you know, don't get too excited. And they're my honest views. Um, and I'm the Gig Guy London. If 
you've got any questions, any comments, leave them below and um, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Yeah, comments and questions and stuff are coming in like fast and furious. So um, yeah, leave comments below. I'm the Kid Guy London. Thank <laughs> you.